In this video, we're going to discuss editing CSS live on a web page. In the previous video, we actually ended up with this page here. And this is exactly what we're going to start with. We're just going to edit this page. Now, if you remember, the CSS for this looked like this right here. And that mapped to these XHTML objects. Now, what I had set up here is kind of a complex layout. I actually had a div with text and then a span inside with orange. What I'm going to do right away is I'm actually going to set this back to a div just so it makes some more sense to work with. Traditionally you don't do this kind of stuff with the span. So we have a weird setup here. You can actually see that this object is a sibling to this one right here. This is just text and this is a div. And this is our first container object called apple and this is our second called orange and if you remember the CSS over here they were both set to float left this means that this thing really doesn't want anything to the left of it and the same with this so as you can see from what we're looking at here we have banana this box here didn't want to be to the left of banana so it started up its own thing and this guy here didn't want to be to the left of apple now say we wanted to play with that some more we could go back over here edit our structure a little bit to get you know more or less structure but we're going to leave it like this and we're going to just play with our CSS now I can go ahead and edit this save it and reload and then change again edit save and reload and just keep doing that forever and ever and ever until I get something I like until I get it perfect but we don't want to do that what we're going to do is edit CSS live and this functionality is provided by various things but most notably it's provided by this web developer toolbar you can actually go up to the CSS menu here, select CSS and edit CSS. As you can see, you can also use Control Shift E to get to it. And you just see edit CSS, which incidentally kind of loads up inside the all-in-one sidebar here. So what we're going to do here is just edit. You can literally just type, and as you type, it's going to actually make the changes. So if I go ahead and remove this float, you're going to see that all kinds of weird stuff happens. And if I put it back and I move this float, you can see that it moves back up there. That one's a bit more straightforward. Put that back. So let's go ahead and do some other things. This right here, I can actually go ahead and set a border on. One pixel, solid black. And there we go. I can set up padding. 20 pixels all the way around. Or just say I want 20 padding on top, 10 padding on the right, 5 padding on the bottom and no padding on the left. I can also go back and change the color of this. I can also change the background color of it. Just like that. I can also change the font in here to 12 pixels and set the family to Verdana Sans Serif. Now we have that. And of course, as you can see, that propagates throughout the entire object, even to the div inside, just as CSS is supposed to do. And we can go down here and edit this, put this one as 14, maybe set it up with a weight. And I'll go ahead and set up the text decoration too, on the line. Maybe set up a letter spacing. And back up here, we go ahead and set up a line height. And we could do more than just styling. We could do the entire positioning system like this. Go ahead and remove the float left there. And if we remove the float left here, and we could set this one up to use absolute positioning. Give it a left, 100 pixels. Top of 50 pixels. Just like that, and you can move it around. And now it's way down the page. We can also go ahead and set up this object here, even though it's inside the other object. We can go ahead and pull it out. Just like this. It's 150 pixels below the other one. Go ahead and move it above that like this, move it up maybe 400, 
As you can see, our options are not limited. If we can do it by saving the file, we could do it in here. We might just go ahead and grab one of these other objects. Set it to float left. Or set them all to float left. And clear off a float with the second one. There's all kinds of things you can do in here. So as you can see again, you're not limited. Now to save this, what you actually have to do is you have to copy this and paste it back in. Because if you don't do that, you go to reload, what you're going to do is actually reload up the new CSS. So you want to go in here, save, and then you can reload your CSS. So every time you make your changes, you want to remember to save it back in here. Well, what else can you do in here? You could add another style sheet, disable the browser default styles, and a bunch of other stuff. You can actually change the box model too. And we can see that like this. We have a padding set, we have a border set, we have a margin set, and set up a width. Like 400. Now we go ahead and switch box models. Now you can see it actually changes. And we can go ahead and just view the CSS if we want to see it over here. And as you can see, it opens up in a new tab. So we go back. And this is one thing you want to be careful of. When you're working with this and you open up a new tab, this whole screen is going to take the CSS of that new screen. So if I go ahead and go to some page now, it's going to load the CSS of that page. So you go back to yours, yours is gone. You're going to want to remember to save when you do this. But as you can see on this page, which is a really good example, there's actually a bunch of them. And you can actually go in here and move some of this stuff. And just kind of change it to something else. You can do whatever you want. Reload. It's back to normal. Now, one of the most popular sites to work with is the CSS Zen Garden. This website is actually a demonstration of the power of CSS. This page right here has a specific XHTML layout, has a specific structure, just like this. It works with pure XHTML and CSS. Absolutely no tables absolutely no font elements or anything like that. We're working with headers, spans, paragraphs, divs, body, head, meta, and some ba other basic ones. And they do this entire website with just a few basic elements. And here's the thing. When you go to a different page, it looks nothing like the other page. And when you go to view source, it's actually the exact same structure. This is possible thanks to CSS. You just go over here and you can see the CSS used for that page. And they do this really for your learning. If you want to master CSS, this is where you go. You come in here and you see how the master's done this because these people are the absolute masters of CSS. Let's go ahead and remove this. And this one's actually importing out of the file, so it still has the file. Go ahead and remove that, and now we have the blank canvas, which they would start with. And they'd make their images, and they'd work with all kinds of positioning to make this thing possible. Let's go ahead and go back to the other page, and remove the stuff here. And as you can see, it's the exact same page. Now all of these sites are amazing. Every single one of these designs are expert designs, but some of them stand out more than others. Look at this one. You just type in a certain code at the end if you know which one you're looking for. And it brings it up. This one here is the exact same page but with a different CSS sheet. And another one that's really amazing is this one here. 088. 
This one is actually horizontal with menus. These menus are done purely in CSS. Now, you're not going to be able to do any of this stuff in Internet Explorer, so don't even try. But in here, you can see the total power of CSS. And like I say, you can go over here and look at their style. And see how this person did this, purely with CSS. Because they didn't change this code one bit. There's no fancy JavaScript in here, nothing. Just the exact same page. And when you go he through this, you might actually see a lot of different pieces of CSS that you're not used to. If you already know CSS, but you're not, a, but you're not into advanced CSS, this might actually seem weird. The first child. This is an advanced CSS selector. Now we can go ahead and remove all this, and basically come down to the same page we ended up with. And we could, of course, go to this, look at what we have to work with, and just go ahead and start creating. Go ahead and grab this container here. And just try something. And try something else here. And since Firefox has an extreme level of CSS support, you could do all kinds of stuff in here that you really can't do in various other places. For example, if I wanted to grab some sort of paragraph next to some other paragraph and color it, I can in here. Let's go ahead and set the background color here. Let's just grab this to 333 and just set this here to 33F. Now the first paragraph of every set is a different color. So you can tap into the full power of CSS with this and play with anything you need to. And the CSS Zen Garden is definitely a great place to start. Now for more information on CSS Zen Garden, you could actually check out the book, The Zen of CSS Design. It's actually written by the creator of the site and it actually goes through in deep detail some of what went through the designers minds when they created these things and also they explain a lot of their code so if you want to be a master of CSS that's definitely a book to check out but in any case those are the basics of editing CSS live in Firefox